Hello and welcome to this video. Today we will show you guys how we train the magpies. Before doing so, I just want to say thank you for all the support that the project got recently, uh, both in the form of donations on our Buy Me A Coffee page, but also a lot of people showing interest in the project. And with that said, let's get started. Um, we have divided the training into three phases to make it easier to understand. Uh, in the first phase, we put the feeder on a timer. So we let the feeder run maybe four times an hour. And this makes the magpies understand that they can go to the machine in order to get food. In the second phase, we let the feeder run when there's a magpie landing on the platform. And the purpose of this phase is to get the magpies used to the sounds that the machine make and also make them a bit used to the litter. And as you can see, the second phase is divided into two sub-phases. And one of them is without litter and one is with litter. Uh, in the third phase, we only let the feeder run when there is something dropped into the machine. And you can see here that the third phase has three sub-phases. So at first, uh, they only drop stuff into the machine by accident. And with time to get somewhat conscious about dropping stuff into the box. Uh, and with time, they actually understand the whole concept. And then we increase the distance between the hole and the litter. We didn't gather any footage during phase one. So we're just going to jump right into phase two. So we started phase two the 15th of March last year and you can see some videos of birds here that are really used to phase one so they go to the platform in order to get some food but what they don't realize is that phase two has started so suddenly when the magpies are just gonna take a snack the outdoor camera detects that a magpie has landed on the platform and triggers the feeder motor and at first this is really scary for the magpies it takes some time for the magpies to get used to this sound, but after a while they realize that this sound means more food. So after 11 days in the first part of phase 2, we started the second part. And in this part, we introduced litter to the platform. You can see how the magpies are really suspicious of the litter at first, but they quickly adapt to this as well. We're going to turn over to Thomas for some statistics of phase two. So here we're going to see a graph that summarizes the training during phase two. In this graph we have on the y-axis the percent neophobic interaction between the machine and the magpies. Neophobic is just another word for being afraid of new things. So what we've done here is that we looked at each and every interaction between the machine and the magpies and then we have scored them as neophobic or non-neophobic interaction. And on the x-axis we have the number of days since phase two started. So you can see here in the beginning almost all interactions between the magpies and the machine they were afraid. But after approximately five to seven days uh, the percentage starts dropping and already on day 12 it was down to under 10%. Then we introduced litter and once again the neophobic interactions increased uh, quite dramatically. Uh, but after just one or two days they got used to that too. And you can see also on day 20 we introduced a lot of litter on the experimental platform. It took some days for them to get used to that, but after day 26 there was 0% neophobic interaction and we thought we were ready to move on to phase 3. 28 days after starting phase 2 we start phase 3. And in this phase 
we only run the feeder when something is dropped into the machine. At first, the magpies do this by accident, and we try to make it more likely by putting food into bottle caps, under bottle caps, and into the food bowl, among with a lot of other trash. In the beginning of phase 3, uh, the magpies are often scared off because there's a lot of stuff going on. But with some time and some more of these interactions, this happens. And with this, the magpies have guided us into phase 3.2. And now the magpies show that they're starting to understand how the machine works. The litter is still very close to the hole, so they use their beak to push stuff into the hole. After 4 days in phase 3.2, we increase the distance between the litter and the hole, and thereby we go to phase 3.3. At first, the litter is still left on the platform, but the magpies can no longer push stuff into the hole, instead they have to pick stuff up. We slowly increase the distance between the litter and the hole, and after a while we clean the whole platform from litter, and instead we put the litter in a container that is close to the platform. Later we progress even more, and the litter is now put on our lawn, and we increase the distance more and more. And now, some more statistics with Thomas. Here is a graph over how the training progressed during phase 3. Uh, in the graph on the y-axis we can see the percentage of conscious interactions. So once again we have looked at each and every video they have and classified them as a conscious interaction or non-conscious interaction. On the x-axis we see the number of days after we started phase 3. So here you can see it was a long time that nothing happened. It was just random accidents that when the magpies pushed the litter into the hole. From day 13 there was a steady increase in the percentage of conscious interactions and from approximately day 21 and onwards they were all conscious. Yes, believe it or not we faced some problems during the development of the magpie machine. At times the machine was just a very advanced way to give the magpies food. Before we used a proper light lock and we had a lot of problems with false interactions due to for example the, a cloud passing by the sun and this would trigger our trigger mechanism and also the magpie could just sit on top of the hole and then jump away and this would also trigger the mechanism and this must have been very confusing for the magpies during the training and probably slowed down the training a lot. Another problem during phase 3 was sometimes when the magpie landed quite hard on the platform uh, this would make the whole cabinet vibrate and this would actually trigger the mechanism as well partly this was due to the fact that the detection threshold was set too low but also that we used a very simple detection algorithm all of the footage seen so far is from the first pack of magpies we trained in early September last year uh, the first pack of magpies disappeared and a second pack of magpies appeared. They didn't really know how to use the machine but they were already used to the sound of the feeder and the litter. So we started in phase 3.1. And the second training has a lot in common with the first training, however everything happened during a much smaller time frame. In the first training it took about 32 days from phase 3.1 until they were fully taught and in the second training it took only 11 days. And this might be due to less false interactions since we implemented a better light lock and also that the detection threshold was set higher. And that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and if you have any further questions ask them in the comment section.